If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So what we've been talking about are these things called uh, context-free grammars. And they are a model of computation that allow us to uh, generate a string by applying rules over and over from a start variable. But we, when we talked about the regular languages, we had these DFA, NFA things, right? Which are these machine models that you feed a string into and it says yes or no on them. So what we would want to answer here is, is there a machine, machine, hope I can spell it right, model for CFGs? or I guess equivalent to context-free grammars. And that's what we're gonna actually talk about today. So let's actually uh, think about it first. So let's suppose that I have this simple grammar right here. So this is of course the grammar for zero to the end, one to the end. We all know this one. So let's think about what actually happens here. So when we apply, when we start with this variable S, we can apply either one of these two rules, obviously. And of course, we have to start with the start variable because that's the definition of the grammar. So what actually happens here? Well, eventually what's gonna happen if we generate a non-empty string, we're going to have something that looks like this. So, so in some number of rules, we're gonna get a bunch of zeros and then a bunch of ones that appear after it, okay? And then let's suppose that we're somewhere in the middle of the computation. Well, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have this S variable right in the middle of things, right? So if we want to have a machine model for the context-free languages, we need to be able to input a string and say yes or no onto it. Well, clearly we need something more powerful than a DFA or NFA, which means we can't just have states and transitions and whatnot. We gotta have something additionally to this. So let's think about what's happening here. Well, these, eventually we're gonna have a string of zeros, then a string of ones, right? Because we're gonna apply this first rule until we're done, and we, then we apply this one, of course. So what happens here is these zeros at the front, if we think about it, there's no variable that occurs in there. And consequently, there's no variable in this particular case but no matter what, either a variable is going to appear first or a terminal appears first, right? So remember, if a terminal appears first, it's never going to change. So if we want to have a machine model, what we can do is we can simulate a rule application. And if a terminal appears, then now what we can do is read that corresponding character off of the input. So in this case, when we apply this rule right here, this zero is never going to be modified at any point because it's a context-free grammar. So then when we have the string as input, we will read the zeros off of, read a zero off the input because it's right at the front. Um, this one won't be read until later because this S in the middle could theoretically produce anything, right? So what we want to do then is we could, we could have a whole load of these variables and a whole bunch of stuff on the right here. So from this S onward, this over here can be anything, right? It could theoretically be anything, but we know that this is only terminals. And we can deal with those by reading off of the input the, the same thing that was produced by the grammar. But over here, it could be theoretically anything. So what we would need to do is to store all that stuff onto some structure. So that's what we're going to try to do. So what we need to do is to store uh, all this somehow. Well, we can't store them in states because this right-hand side could uh, grow as long as we need to. Think about this. If we look at this right here, the 
number of ones that we produce by applying this rule over and over and over, this could grow arbitrarily big. We, we, if we had some limit, we could surpass that limit no matter what. So if I tried to bake this into the states, I'm going to have trouble. So what we need to do is to have some kind of structure that grows, right? So we need to have some kind of structure that grows and is not fixed like the states are. Another thing that we should notice is that we can always use a leftmost derivation. So remember, we can always use a leftmost derivation. Because, and remember, it's a context-free grammar. If we have a bunch of variables that we could uh, apply a rule with, we can always choose the first one, the leftmost one. So that indicates here, because the string is being read from left to right, and we can always use the leftmost variable without changing the language of the grammar, this tells us we need some kind of structure where we can access stuff on one side. And that is the motivation for using a stack. So the machine that we're going to be talking about from uh, a few videos from now on is something called a pushdown automaton. And it's abbreviated PDA, not public display of affection. <laughs> uh, although you may want to talk about that more than this, probably. Um, but yeah, these are called pushdown automata. And they're exactly the same as an NFA, except now we're going to have an additional thing built into the transitions. So, um, but on each transition, uh, we can uh, push or not. We could uh, not push onto a stack. Uh, we could pop or not onto the stack. So we're only going to allow ourselves one stack. And I want you to think about why um, we're only going to restrict ourselves to one. Um, if we have two, it actually changes the model. But we're going to stick with one because it's simpler. Um, so we, we can push onto the stack or we can pop to the stack. Um, some properties of this stack are that it starts empty. And another one is that uh, it can end non-empty. So when we're all done and we accept or whatever, we don't have to have an empty stack. We could if we want to, and there is a way to enforce it, but we're, we are not going to require ourselves to do so. Okay. So how are the transitions going to look? So we're going to have have transitions that look like this. So let's say state P to state Q. So here's what the transition is going to look like. It's going to look something like this. A comma B arrow C. And what do each of these mean? The A here means uh, what we read. So that's what we read. Uh, the B here is what we pop. And the C here is what we uh, uh, push. Actually, I'm just going to simplify this to say what well, uh, read, uh, pop, push. And there's a very good reason why it's in this order. So the read has nothing to do with the push or pop because um, the reading has no, is just coming from the input. It has nothing to do with the stack. So we could theoretically put anything we want onto the stack regardless of what's being read. Um, Oh, another thing, we can only push or pop one thing at a time, or zero. We, we could ignore pushing or popping, so that'd be zero, or we can push one character on at a time, or pop. So it's important that the pop appear first. And we can only take this, so that, here's something I should also note. So we can, we can take the transition, we're allowed to take it if... Uh, we can read the A, and note that the A here could represent a character or empty. It doesn't have to be a character. And two, we can pop the B. 
So if we fail either one of those, we're not allowed to take the transition at all. So and think about it. If we can't read something, there's no po we can't take the transition, just like with the NFA DFA type model. But if we can't, if we want to take this transition, but we can't pop this, then that means that we're trying to pop something that's not on the top of the stack, and which doesn't make sense. But with a stack, you can always push stuff onto the stack regardless what's what's there because we're just pushing on one side. So we that's why the pop appears first. Because if I'm doing a pop and a push at the same time, if I did the push first, then I'm just going to push a character on, but the thing I want to pop is not at the top of the stack anymore. It's below whatever I just put on. So that's why we have to pop first and then do the push. Okay, But all transitions are going to look like this. And if I wanted to have a transition that uh, that didn't touch the stack at all, then I would just set B and C both to be epsilon. So it's, those are epsilon transitions with respect to the stack. Okay, so that was a quick introduction to uh, what a pushdown automaton is. Leave your questions down below. As always, there are many links to do so to support the channel in the video description. If you want to support the channel even more, there are... Uh, you can like and subscribe to the channel, and as always, I'll see you next time.